Hi, have you always wanted to learn to code but don't know where to start? What's up guys, this is your boy Zinni back again with another video. My thesis is that it has become infeasible uh, in light of what's happened over the last six years for a software developer to consider himself professional if he does not practice test-driven development. Things are looking very, very good. I mean, look at the size of this crowd, for instance. We're huge. We're fitting in this big conference place, actually not fitting in very well because it was pretty crowded out there. Today, we're going to talk about how to parse Markdown in PHP to HTML. Top five programming languages for you to learn in 2020 to get a job without even needing a college degree. I make a video on this topic every single year and you guys seem to eat it up. If you're not certified or if you are certified, chances are you answered a question that I helped put on the test or at least reviewed, uh, whether it's the PHP certification or the Zen framework certification. You know, if I'm certified, I know enough to actually code, right? And, and so that's where certification comes and in. And Steve Jobs, with several billion dollars in his pocket, says, wow, well, I'll show those guys. And uh, he builds this hardware, and, he, and, and there's a bunch of guys out on the street, you know, holding up signs. We will code Objective-C for food. So in case you haven't figured it out, I've just done a search on YouTube for web development, and I've just been enjoying the wisdom of some of the popular developers out there. You know, to be a web developer and to have access to YouTube these days is a real privilege because there are so many experts everywhere all eager to tell us how we should do things. Many of them are eager to test us and give us certification for a nominal fee, of course. Some of them are kind of brash. They stand on the beach or they show off in their swanky cars or their swanky offices. Some of them, like this dude here, swear like drunken sailors and are trying really hard to raise their game. But all of them, myself included, have got one thing in common. And that is that until this day, none of them ever talk about what they have done. Why is that? What is it that we're all afraid of? Think about it. I mean, I can only speak for myself. I've had this thing, well, I don't want people to come after me or go after good clients or ex-clients or something. But surely, if we are professionals, then if that ever did happen, then we would surely be able to deal with it in some kind of reasonable and intelligent manner. So what are we afraid of? Why is nobody talking about what they've actually done? And you know, it's funny, from time to time you'll get somebody like maybe tech lead or something who'll say, yeah, I worked for Google or I worked for Facebook. They may even dish out a line like, you know, I was involved in a chat app or something. But never do any of them discuss the specifics. Never do they say, well, here's one problem that we had and here's how we solved it and um, here's the exact and very precise contribution that I made to this app. You don't know that information. You don't know what they've done. You don't know what I've done. You don't know what any of us have done. Well, on this day, one man is about to do the unthinkable. I'm going to show you a little bit of what I've done, just a little bit, and there's a few reasons why I'm doing this, and they're all really selfish, probably kind of stupid, but the first reason is I am a commercial developer, I don't consider myself a teacher, even though I've got one course out there called Speed Coding Academy, I don't consider myself a teacher, I'm a commercial developer but I don't have a portfolio. I've never had a portfolio. <laughs> it's mad, you know? And 
what I tell people is, you know, prospects, if they're interested, my area of expertise, uh, you know, when I'm out there trying to earn a living, my area of expertise is building large web applications, usually for call centers. But it's very difficult to explain what that means or show people that or anything just verbally, you know. Um, but that's what I do. I build apps that usually have more than half a million lines of code. That's what I've been doing. Well, I started in 1996, but in terms of like large scale apps, I'd say I started that in 2004. So that's what I do for a living. I've never even mentioned it here. I build big, big, giant apps. You know, they're not particularly clever or graceful or perfect or anything like that, but they are certainly quite big. So I figured it would be interesting to just chuck one of them on video and give you a tour. So that's what I'm going to be doing with this series. I'm going to be just walking through one of the apps that I made for a client. This is an app that took me 18 months to do. It wasn't, it was not, and I stress the point, full time by any means. I just started, did some things. It was a part time gig actually, and it was a good client of mine. And so, um, yeah, that, that was that. Now, the reasons why I'm doing this, did I finish my list? Did I even start? I don't know. But I'm doing this, first of all, so that I've got a kind of CV. I am a commercial developer. I hope that in the future I can show prospects these videos and give them some idea of what I've done. The second reason why I'm doing this is because as a developer and a YouTuber, I want to push myself. I want to put myself in a place where I feel kind of uncomfortable and I want to put content out there that nobody else is putting out. Now, maybe 99.99999% of people find this really boring, but if there's a few people who can learn something from this, then that's good. So my second reason is, it's basically an attempt to try and bring something different to this space called YouTube. And the third reason why I'm doing this is really just a, a sort of fun challenge. I'm interested to know, has anybody built a bigger app? I mean, personally, the app that I'm about to show, I did not do it as part of a team. I was not there you know, as some cog on a big wheel. No, I, I did the whole thing. I mean, there's a few libraries, there's two front-end frameworks and some APIs, but probably over 95% of the code was me. And I'm curious to know if anybody else is building stuff like this. I don't know. I'd love to know. Am I the only one that does this for a living? <laughs> I really don't know. So I thought I'd put that out there and just see if there's anyone else that has been doing this type of thing as well. Anyway, those of you who are regulars to my little YouTube channel will know that over these last two years, I've spent most of my time focusing on Speed Coding Academy and also working on a framework which is called the TronGate Framework, which hasn't been released out into the wild yet, by the way, but this is just a holding page, right? But I'm hoping to have this out maybe August or September next year. And I think one of the things that I'm eager to do, and I always said that if I ever do throw my hat into the frameworks arena, then I'm doing it with, let's just say, intention, you know? I'm not turning up to make up the numbers, and if I ever find myself in a position where somebody's saying, well, why did you do things this way, or why did you choose this architecture instead of that, or whatever, then I want you to know that this is not just something that I'm saying because it sounds good or because somebody else said it and I thought, oh, there's a nice sound bite. I want you to know that everything we're doing here, especially the people at Speed Coding Academy, I want you to know that this is something that has came from my life. This is my whole life, you know? So when I see a guy like Bob Martin here, bad-mouthing the next team or saying that you're not a professional unless you do things his way, unless you use test-driven development. When I, when I disagree with that, I'm not disagreeing just to be a pain in the neck. I'm disagreeing because 
I've been out doing this in the cold, the cold, what am I saying? I've been out there doing this in the, I think I was trying to say coal face. I've been doing this for real, you know? I can tell you the top five security risks that a call center faces from the internet, you know? I've done this. I know what the limitations of test-driven development are. I know about things like benchmarks and the limitations of MVC and the good things about that. And I know about JavaScript challenges and things like that. I mean, I have that, you know? So why not put it all in video? Why not give people a demonstration and then maybe it will help somebody. Maybe somebody out there will say, well, you know, hopefully you'll have some confidence because you've now been exposed to something that nobody else is talking about. So that's what this is all about. And I do hope that you enjoy this. It's going to probably take me about two or three hours to demonstrate this app. It's over a million lines of code. But in the next video, I'm going to explain the basic database structure. I'll introduce you to the three databases that this application has. I'll explain why it needs three databases and what they were all doing. And then I'm going to, of course, talk about the general problem, let's say, that this was addressing the whole app. And I'm going to explain why I used Node.js for lead distribution and why I chose that technology over PHP. But then after that, well, I'll show you why I chose PHP for some other stuff. So I'm going to give you the full picture. You're going to see a variety of front-end frameworks, a whole variety of um, back-end stuff of all sorts, shapes and sizes. There's some Angular JS in there. I think there's some jQuery Mobile SMS stuff linking up with banks, the Royal Mail, um, just tons and tons of stuff. It's over a million lines of code. So I really hope that you enjoy this series and I'll see you in the next one.